since in my last video I reviewed the 2x focal extender from Explore Scientific, I thought that it might be a good idea to make a video where I talk about bellows, focal extenders and reducers in a bit more detail, highlighting the differences between these designs to help you with your purchase decision. So without further ado, let's get this video on the way. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to Video Observatory. So all three, a bellow, a focal extender and a focal reducer, are designs with the same idea in mind, to modify the focal length of the telescope, increasing or decreasing it by a certain factor. Let's start with the bellow. Named after a British mathematician and physicist in the early 19th century, Peter Berlow, a bellow is an optical device capable of increasing the focal length of the telescope. It achieves this by employing a single negative lens element that diverges the light delivered by the telescope, thus increasing its effective focal length. If, for example, we take an 8-inch dub with a focal length of 1200 mm, then by using a 2x bellow, the focal length increases to 2400 mm. This in turn has a direct effect on the magnification obtained in combination with a specific eyepiece. The magnification is calculated by dividing the focal length of the telescope by the focal length of the used eyepiece. And this is also the main reason bellows are so popular. Simply by adding one to your eyepiece collection will effectively double the magnification options at your disposal, eliminating the need of getting dedicated eyepieces for certain magnification levels. For visual observations, two, maybe three X bellows are recommended. Anything higher will result in magnifications that aren't really usable. 4 and 5x bellows, however, do make sense in astrophotography, where instead of an eyepiece, you'd use a camera to capture images. The negative lens element of a bellow usually consists of two lenses that not only increases the focal length of the telescope, but also as a side effect, increases the eye relief of the eyepiece. Since the exit pupil is dependent on the telescope's focal length as well, it will also be modified by the bellow. The exit pupil being the bright disk of light that is formed by the eyepiece's optics and is visible when the eye is held at the correct distance from the eyepiece. Since bellows are typically used in combination with short focal length eyepieces that normally offer a short eye relief, this is a welcomed feature. A bit longer eye relief will make observing through that particular eyepiece more comfortable since you don't have to bury your eye into the eyepiece to see the whole field of view at once. This is especially helpful if you wear glasses. This side effect is, however, not always a good thing. With long focal length eyepieces, for example, it is possible for the eye relief to get too long and the exit pupil to get pushed past the eyepiece manufacturer's intended position, resulting in optical aberrations like vignetting. This is where the edges of the field of view lose brightness and appear much darker in the center. This is why a bellow makes sense, especially in combinations with short focal length eyepieces. Here I want to mention that there are normal length bellows and there are bellows with shorter barrels. Since the normal ones have a relatively long barrel, they aren't always compatible with prism or mirror diagonals. They simply don't fully fit inside. It's because of this that you might be inclined to go for one with a shorter barrel, also called shorty. However, these bellows with their strong negative element are particularly susceptible to vignetting and will degrade images produced by long focal length eyepieces. So keep this in mind when you're shopping for a bellow. In my opinion, one of the best bellows for visual observations is the 2X version from Teleview. 
It's very well put together and the lenses are so good that the negative impact on the views is negligible. The excellent corrected and treated lenses might even be able to improve the views of some low-end cheaper eyepieces. There is, however, a way to avoid these potential problems of bellows altogether, and that is by using a focal extender instead. Just like a bellow, a focal extender will increase the focal length of the telescope by a certain factor, but it is doing so by employing a much more complex optical system consisting of four lenses, a negative lens element plus a positive pupil correcting element. This won't affect the position of the exit pupil and will leave the eye relief of the eyepiece untouched. So how exactly does this work? When light passes through the negative lens element, it diverges and this causes the focal point to move further back. This results in an increase in the effective focal length of the telescope, which in turn increases the magnification of the image that is produced by the eyepiece. The second positive lens element is there to keep the diverging light from the negative element in check so that the exit pupil doesn't get altered. The resulting image is therefore very well corrected and can retain all the details captured by the telescope. So when should you choose a focal extender over a bellow lens? Well, the first situation would be if you plan on using it in combination with longer focal length eyepieces where due to the modified position of the exit pupil optical aberrations might become visible. Another reason would be the higher lens quality. Compared to bellows, focal extenders are usually considered to be the better alternative due to the better corrected resulting image. This, however, is reflected in the purchasing price, with a focal extender usually being the costlier option. Here I can wholeheartedly recommend the 2x focal extender from Explore Scientific. Its premium build quality, combined with the excellent optical elements, make this one of the best focal extenders you can get right now. All right. So what if we aren't interested in increasing the focal length of the telescope, but in reducing it? Well, in this case, a focal reducer will help us achieve exactly this. While doing so, a focal reducer will increase the field of view, which results in a lower magnification obtained in combination with a certain eyepiece. Placed between the telescope and the eyepiece, a focal reducer typically consists of a single positive lens element, designed to reduce the angle of incidence of the light entering the telescope, which results in a smaller image being formed at the focal plane. This reduction in image size allows for a wider field of view to be captured without sacrificing image quality. Even though Focal reducers can be used for visual observations to look at larger objects such as galaxies, star clusters and nebulae. Their main use uh, is in the field of astrophotography, where they are used to capture wide field images of the night sky. Besides allowing for a wider field of view, a good focal reducer can also improve the quality of the views by reducing some of the system's optical aberrations, such as a curved field of view or even chromatic aberrations. Here I can recommend the focal reducers from Teleview as a premium option or the ones from Omegon as a decent budget alternative. Now that we have looked at all three types of focal modifiers, I want to go over one more aspect that, in my opinion, is very important and should be kept in mind when deciding whether to get one. If we take a step back and look at a bad low focal extender and reducer, we notice that while this might help obtain higher magnifications or get rid of some optical aberrations, Simply put, they represent extra glass elements that incoming light from the telescope has to pass through. 
And this is always something one should be aware of because the extra glass surfaces will always reduce the quality of the final image. Sometimes it's negligible, but sometimes it really isn't. So it's only a question by how much. This is due to the less than perfect quality of the lens coating and the glass itself. This is why no matter if you are looking for a bellow focal extender or focal reducer, I recommend investing the extra money in getting a good one with quality lenses and lens coatings instead of going for cheap ones. It will be worth it. Anyway, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave. This helps the channel out a lot. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.